In the previous video, we saw that the key to understanding neurons is by understanding these little guys, the chemicals that cross synapses to pass a signal onto the next cell, aka neurotransmitters. Over a hundred neurotransmitters have been identified and they play significant roles in almost all body functions and brain activity. In a previous video, we covered GABA and glutamate. And in this video, we're gonna look at five more, acetylcholine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. I'm gonna tell you what each of them does, then give you a fun fact about it. Not that the other stuff isn't fun, but this fact will be funner. Let's start with acetylcholine. It's a tricky word, so it's worth trying to say it out loud. Acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter is found in the brain, spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, i.e. everywhere. Pretty much every muscle in the body has a receptor for acetylcholine, which means every time you move, it's essentially because that muscle was activated by a neuron releasing acetylcholine. Experiments with rats found that acetylcholine activity in the brain tended to increase whenever they were involved in learning activities, even suggesting that it might play a role in neuroplasticity. And here's a fun fact. Many insecticides kill insects by taking away their ability to remove acetylcholine from their muscles, so they basically can't stop muscle contraction and die. And I just made you feel sad for bugs. But maybe even sadder, one reason why nicotine from cigarettes is so addictive is because it's chemically very similar to acetylcholine, and so it activates a lot of brain receptors that acetylcholine normally would, which, amongst other things, activates reward centers and makes us want to use it again and again because it feels good. Fascinating and also so dangerous. Adrenaline is next, or epinephrine, as we call it here in Australia. This neurotransmitter is released as part of the stress response, regulating anxiety, fear, and emotional arousal. It also happens to be released by the adrenal glands, located just above the kidneys, and because it's carried around the blood, it gets classified as both a neurotransmitter and a hormone. Interestingly, regardless of how it's acting, it sort of has the same goal of preparing the body for that stress fight or flight response. Epinephrine is what gives EpiPen their names because it was discovered that anaphylaxis, the severe reaction that can occur if exposed to something you're highly allergic to, is for some strange reason really reduced with an immediate injection of epinephrine into the bloodstream. This is literal life-saving stuff. And side note, if you don't already know how to use an EpiPen, go do a first aid course. You may literally save someone's life. Norepinephrine is next. And if it sounds similar to epinephrine, well, it's also chemically very, very similar. Both a neurotransmitter and a hormone and also associated with the body's stress response. It's also been shown to regulate our mood and our ability to concentrate. Okay, fun fact time. Most vertebrates like us and these very cute pets over here have norepinephrine in our bodies, but in most arthropods and worms, it's replaced by a very similar chemical called octopamine, which does very similar things to norepinephrine. I mean, look how similar the chemicals are. And theories as to which evolved first and then morphed into the other are just as debated as the chicken versus the egg argument. If that's not a fun fact, I don't know what is. Neurotransmitter number four, dopamine, which has quite successfully entered pop culture recently, getting a reputation as being the pleasure chemical in the brain. And for the most part, it's fairly accurate. Dopamine plays a really diverse role in our everyday behavior, but in general, it explains why we engage in pleasurable activities. Dopamine generally makes you feel good, so if something makes your brain release dopamine, you'll want to repeat that behavior. It's also key in understanding why humans get addicted to everything from drugs to food to social media. And although dopamine is always presented as that edgy, fun, pleasure chemical, in reality, it plays so many other roles in the body. It's involved in breastfeeding, in the immune system, and even in feeling nauseous. So the next time someone says it's just a pleasure chemical, well, you can correct them like the genius you are. And finally, another chemical that's becoming well-known in our culture today, serotonin, which is often said to be our brain's happy chemical. Of course, again, it's much more complex than that. This neurotransmitter helps regulate mood, eating, arousal, and pain. And it's also part of regulating our sleep-wake cycle and our internal body clock. Decreased serotonin levels in the brain have also been linked to clinical depression. Speaking of serotonin, do you recognize any of these drug names? Well, they are all antidepressant drugs and happen to all be the same class of drugs too, called SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. SSRIs have been shown to be very effective in treating some forms of depression. In short, they prevent serotonin from being recycled back 
into the presynaptic neuron. Meaning serotonin lingers in the synapse for longer and continues activating the next cell. It's a very clever way of increasing the effect of serotonin without actually having to produce more serotonin in the brain. As you can see, neurotransmitters are fascinating and key to treating many psychological conditions. Well, I hope they put the fun in psychological function and I'm gonna stop now. Goodbye.